Welcome home, brave heroes. I'm Ash, this is Ash Quest, and I know that I said it was my last Dungeon Tree video. I know, I know. I meant it too, uh, but something weird happened when I went into my local Dungeon Tree after having the mindset of looking for stuff, of trying to shoehorn stuff into my game, of looking for resources that could be viewed as inspiring. I tapped everything out. I drained it dry of all the resources I could find, up to my imagination. Somebody with a better imagination or understanding of crafting or more experience could definitely go in there and go ad infinitum for just days on end finding stuff to make content about. That person was not me. However, with that mindset gone, I approached Dungeon Tree a little differently. I'd go in looking for completely different things. And out of the corner of my eye, I would find stuff and I would say, no, 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 there's, there's no way. That's not really, that's not enough to make a video about, especially after I said I was done. But then it happened. I went into my local dungeon tree and I found more things that I had to have compiled into a video of hero quest inspiration. So I present to you a return of the witch lord edition, a necromanced version of will it hero quest. And this time we're going to get a little bit silly, but it's all going to make sense in the end, trust me. I don't know that we'll ever reach barbarian skateboarding on skateboard uh, tech deck levels of, of silly again, but we'll get close. This is left, center, right. Buck 25 USD. Uh, it, it's called Pass Play, the game of left, center, right. So left, center, right is a game that you can find for like $7 at Walmart. You don't need to pay $7 at Walmart for left, center, right. You can get it at Dollar Tree. And let me know if you can find this at your local Poundland or equivalent. It comes with instructions on how to play left, center, right, but I don't care about those. What I care about are the myriad of chips, which I may not care about at all later. But for now, it seems interesting that I should have something to use as a token or a marker just in case I don't have gold coins or another scorekeeping method. And then the three D6, which are my left, center, right die. And you might ask, Ash, why do I care? Why am I rolling D6 in Hero Quest with these results? I just thought, you know, what if there was a gladiatorial arena in which your heroes were facing off against multiple strong monsters one at a time, and you needed a better way to determine, kind of maybe in combos, how they were approaching this fight. Maybe they had to go barehanded, but maybe they were more experienced, or maybe they were on equal footing with the monster who was also barehanded. Whatever the case may be, some new inspiration on how to fight this monster may be in the realm of possibility with these dice. So I see these and I kind of think boxing approach. You're attacking left, right, or center, which is not a word that's on the die. Uh, we do have three dots, three black circles, the word left, the word right, and then we have one star. I actually don't know how to play, so I am going to get the instructions. It looks like the most simple game ever. We're going to learn how to play in the next 30 seconds. Each player starts with three tokens. Players take turns rolling the dice. Continuing clockwise, each dot rolls mean one token you don't give away. Three dots is a perfect roll. That means you get to keep all three of the tokens that you start with. If you have just one or two tokens left, only roll that many dice and do what the reduced number of dice dictate. Players with no tokens aren't out of the game just yet, they just pass on their turn to the next player, and who knows, they may just get some tokens back. The last player with tokens wins and gets to collect all the tokens that are left in the center, right? Left in the center, right? Ha ha ha. Each left, pass one token to the left. Each star, put one token in the center. Each right, pass one token to the right. Each dot, don't pass a token. So. The game makes sense as written. We would keep two tokens, we'd pass one token to the left. Kind of wondering why there's 24 tokens. That seems to imply that this game is for up to seven players, but it says that it's between two and four players. Maybe, maybe you get additional tokens, or maybe, I don't know, you, maybe you can start with more than three tokens. It's up to you. You can do this using tokens as a sort of marker of exchanged blows to your enemy. And the character who ends up with all of the blows that they have given, interpret that in the way that makes sense, it could go either way, then they win the bout, they win the game. This is quite a different take on the official arena system that came with against the Ogre Horde. It's, it's not at all like that. We're using different dice here. We're playing with different concepts. So that's why I'm using these classic 
miniatures, the classic version of Hero Quest, because it's something that kind of speaks to a classic bygone era. We keep one token here, we pass one to the left, one to the right. It makes sense if we're playing against two monsters. So to make these dice make a little bit more sense, we say that this particular monster has a combination that has to be rolled before it can be defeated. So we take these dice and roll them to determine what that combination is. We need two dots and we need a left. This means we need to attack him twice in any manner of our choosing, and we need to do a left hook because he's got a bit of an opening, a bit of a weakness, his left horn. That's his right horn. His left horn is unguarded. If we can attack that, he's going down, but only after we've attacked him with two attacks. We can do this with these dice, or we can go ahead and use regular combat dice. Now, I could spend all day theorizing on how to use these and theory crafting. You don't even have to use them in combat. You could use these to craft new spells for the wizard. We've got a star. We've got ingredients, basically reagents that you could be adding to a pot to craft a new spell or a new tincture for the wizard. So we have some classic alchemy possibilities here. But I really just more than anything wanted an excuse to take my classic hero quest miniatures and my jingle blocks and build a quick arena for a display. Moving on to the next one. This is the Classic Games 3 memory card matching game. And before you scoff or say anything, I just want to say don't don't knock it till you've tried it. We've actually that's cool. I didn't expect at all for this to come with anything but three cheap small decks of cards and it actually comes with mats that you can play on. That's really cool. I'm I'm not going to lie. That's actually really neat. There's that manufacturing smell. They've even got the new board game smell. If you just want the if you just want the nostalgia or you haven't bought a new board game in a while and you don't have the room on your shelves to buy a new one, you can just go to Dollar Tree and, and get this, open it up and smell the materials. It's not weird. It's not it's not it's not weird. It's not it's not stop judging. This is not a place for judging. These mats you can play the memory game on, but I'm not really interested in the memory concept so much as I'm interested in using the cards as proxies for more reagents. So if we can get the cards open, which doesn't seem like it's going to happen in this lifetime, there we go. We have, we're supposed to have three decks and we do. We have three decks of 24 cards each, 18, 18 cards each, not 24. And we have a single instruction card. It um, tells you how to play the memory game, not super necessary at all. But we've got a lot of graphics that are really cutesy on here. And then we've got some that they don't need to be interpreted as super cutesy. They could be interpreted as just legitimate uh, ingredients. We've got a couple of them like these these princess looking mermaids that are they're actually pretty cute. I'm not going to lie. Just despite everything that they're, they're pretty cute. So you could take them and still use them in some way. Perhaps these represent the favors of princesses or idols that like stone carved idols, not like singing musical idols. You knew that from whom you are asking favor to try to incorporate more magical ability into your reagents. And these are just the reagents of the sea. We have reagents of the land here. And in here, again, more cutesy graphics. Really, we're talking about the skin of the reptile or reptilian eggs that have been hatched. This can make for a good reagent because you can crush the shells and make something that uh, exfoliates. You can take regular eggs that have perhaps the yolk still in them to create certain potions and tinctures. You can apply high temperature heat. I'm not really sure. This can just be like the newt, the, the eye of newt, tail of newt, uh, just sort of cliche. We've got plants. We've got foot of reptile, foot of demon. We have the wing of bird and we have bones, all reagents that you could. I'm just really taking a look at a kid's game and applying just the most like morbid sort of concept to it that I can. But same thing, unicorns, cupcakes and stars here. If you want to extract a meaning from what could be considered a reagent, I don't know where you're going to get a meaning from this. It could be the very life of the cosmos themselves. It kind of looks like a sprinkled donut, but I really think it's supposed to represent something in space, like a nebula. So we'll just go with that interpretation. And now you can have more of the ingredients from this one than the other two to make something that is only space time magic related. Something for this that is only elemental with water or gives you the blessings of the old gods or the old deep ones or something from this deck which is more land related or gives you something that's more strength in nature. 
some kind of reptilian dinosaur strength. Enough of that, we're going on to the next one, which is the Treasure Hunt figure pack. I actually didn't get this one from Dollar Tree. I got this one from Dollar General. And the reason that I thought it would be pretty cool to get is because it can take the place of, uh, I think, six of these kits from Dollar General. We have a golden sword, which unironically looks really cool. And then we have this, which we can uncover. It's got a map on the front, just in case you needed inspiration from the map, which I am holding upside down. Each of these is a rock from a bygone era, a temple of old. Are we, are we, are there any, oh, this isn't, oh, you know what I thought this was going to be? I thought this was going to be the thing that you get that is just a lump of stuck together sand and they form it into rocks and then you have a couple of plastic tools that are absolutely worthless and don't do anything that come with it and so you put those away and you open up your silverware drawer and you grab a butter knife or a spoon or something and you chip away at it and it has treasure inside this is not that at all so actually this is disqualified but this has figurines in each of its six sections and these cute little guys you could hero quest them they're adorable. Look at this little sludgy. This, how are you not going to let him in your hero quest game? All right, next one. We're unveiling the treasures of the past. I wonder if I was even supposed to take off that cover up here. Like, is this easy to rip through? Not really. Not really at all. We have a little fire elemental. He comes from the volcano. I think this was like, what was this? Like $6 or something. But I think I got it on sale because there's no way I was going to spend $6 on something that was like this, even if it is tax deductible. I'm just going to go ahead and pull out all of the other stuff, show you all together. We have a cold sort of bear-like demon. These can be like little totems that offer you favors throughout the quest. We've got this crazy funny little skull guy with his hand staff on his no, the bone it's chained to his ankle there's an immense amount of creativity in these little guys come on discover four micro-sized figs oh oh no oh that's that's gold slime that's gold slime in the last one will you find real gold dipped treasure yeah i'm afraid we did i'm afraid we did this one's gold dipped all right this is the worst stop this i i, I okay I've, I've got a napkin I keep a napkin back here to clean up coffee spills. Hold on. That is the absolute worst. That is the worst. Don't, don't do that, manufacturers. It's, it, I don't know if it's just because it's gotten old. This is the second disgusting, gross, slimy gold thing, gold slime thing I have touched in as many weeks, and I don't appreciate it at all. But the thing that's in there is something, the most valuable thing of all, it's a skull miniature with a snake going through an eye socket. This is the coolest thing I think I've, I could have on my board. Like, unironically, shbloop, shbloop. Oh, that's so gross. Why is it fun? Why is it suddenly fun? Oh, it, it's got suction. Oh, it's like, it's like melted chocolate with, with butter. It's like, I could make fudge out of this if I wanted, but it would be poisonous. Oh man, where was I? Where was I? We have four really fun miniatures. We have a really cool symbol, a treasure, and then we have this awesome foil sticker, which is in there as well. So there's that. I want to get this away from me as soon as possible. So we're just going to add it to the trash pile and move on to the next thing. Have you ever wanted to fish in Hero Quest? I have a feeling you're going to say, Ash, what is your actual problem? Are you okay? The answer is no. But I wanted, I, it was $1.25. Just, just enjoy this. Just, just let me have this. Ah, almost, almost. I got one. I got one. I got one. That is surprisingly challenging and fun. I'm not, I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. This is the simplest thing you can get that would give you a mini game in Hero Quest. Forget the fun exterior. You could probably take this, carve it off, hide it, whatever, put it under something that would just give you more uh, landscape look, feel to it, you could unironically just hand this to somebody at the table and be like, catch two fish of the same color before the winder runs out. I dare you. And now they've got to do it. It looks so simple. This is, this is a game for babies, they'll say. This is so dumb. This is a waste of my time. But then like actually having to do it, completely different story. So worth $1.25? Yeah, absolutely. Am I going to use it in my games? I don't, I don't know. But you could is the whole point of this video. 
And the fish could be like a uh, BP potions. They're gonna restore your BP. All right, what else did I get? I got these beads and I have absolutely no use for these whatsoever, except, except one. And I think you're gonna like this. They are beads. I'm not gonna use them for anything creative. You can use these to roll to see if you get a success for something. You have a 33% chance per bead to roll and get a successful hole result. All of the other four faces are flat. Two of the faces are holes because they're beads, obviously. But say you give your you give your you give your barbarian four of them for strength rolls. He's gonna roll four. They're all flat faces. That's that's a fail. Okay? You give your wizard two because he's a weakling. He just needs one to be able to push this table up against the door. Neither neither of them rolled. He fails. The dwarf gets three. The dwarf rolls his three. None of them fall on holes. What's going on? Is this even possible? The elf gets three. He rolls. None of them roll on circles. Okay, maybe this was a bad idea. I got these with the specific purpose in mind that there's five colors for five different stats. Wisdom, charisma, uh, there's broken ones in here. Uh, dexterity, strength, intelligence, and you could absolutely apply any of those that you want and roll them, but they all rolled face side up. They all rolled face side up, except for that one. That one rolled whole side up. So this actually makes me completely question the legitimacy of these. Okay, four of them rolled whole side up here this time. And you could give a number of these to the hero kind of in relation to how much of that stat you think they should have, like the barbarian should have a lot of strength and so on. Okay, okay, so I must have done some, I don't know what I did. I don't know why. None of them were rolling with the whole sides and I was thinking that I had really failed at something here. But now I'm getting average average whole rolls. It's not very much though. It's a low chance. It's kind of a low chance. Put some thought into it. Put some thought into it. Maybe maybe these just need to be sanded down a little more on their whole sides. But think about the opportunities that this might present, or this idea, rather, not necessarily these beads in practice, but the idea of giving your heroes stat dice. Okay, what else did I get here? We got some we got some index cards. I've shown you index cards before, but these are tabbed, which I thought was really, really cool and they come in a variety of colors. So you have a ton of potential here to have a lot of information very cleverly arranged in ways that make it super easy to find what you need, whether that's specific monster stats all grouped together for different expansions or lists of treasure or what different heroes have going on at the time. You as Zargon will never be without a very quick, easy to reference resource again. And if you can't find these at your local Dollar Tree right now, because I only found them just for the first time and maybe it's a limited time thing, I see how easy it is to take a regular deck of index cards and make your own where they're tabbed at the top so that was worth getting to me i got a second set of less center right so i'd have more dice and i got these 3d erasers right now which are at my local dungeon tree because it's getting close to spooky season i would argue that it is spooky season and so you have these 3d erasers which look a little goofy but they can be used as totems of statues on board especially if you are doing Halloween themed hero quest quests, and I totally recommend that you do because there's nothing wrong with that idea at all. It is a perfect idea. It's a great idea. Use hero quest as a means to celebrate Halloween and use Halloween as a way to play hero quest. But like some of these do look like they're pretty spot on for being totems that the heroes can collect or move around the dungeon in order to make things happen, like open up doors and you can move the totems around yourself because they could be possessed by external forces. Finally, oh, and I had two more, which is a skull and a pumpkin with a mustache didn't see the mustache. Finally, I saw these sand buckets, which were on clearance, and they're in the shape of castles, and I don't think it takes a genius to figure out what you might want to do with these. You could have an imposing castle after you remove the handle part sitting on your board in the center, cutting a nice presence that you don't get very often in your games. You could also just have these primed and painted to your liking, and you could have them sitting to either side of your mentor board to give your screen a little more presence and your side of the table a little more prominence, a little more power. But ultimately, I think they just make for very, very fast and easy ways to add decoration to your already overcrowded table. And so that was what I managed to piece together with my latest trip through Dungeon Tree. Sorry to have this thing resurrect from the dead, but you know, that's a perfect theme for this Halloween and every Halloween spooky season. Thanks for watching. Comment anything you'd like down below.
Until next time, have a great rest of your day. Bye for now.